You know, if you would have told me that Sega would be a modern day company that gave the gift of gaming that kept on giving, I'd probably laugh in your face. Sega has created some good games in recent years, but has always played with a reoccurring game title that tends to land them a bad image. This needs to stop. Now! It's a shame, because Sega is a fantastic gaming company. But there's one game that has always left me coming back time and time again, and that award goes to Fantasy Star Online 2. However, Fantasy Star Online 2 has been lacking some luster over the years. I'm not saying that it's a dead game, far from it. It's been 8 years since its initial launch, and Sega has been adding layers of content on top like an ice cream sundae. No, what this game really needs is a rework and OH MY GOD! Excuse me for a moment, I need to go check my pants. Yeah, so, while the world was watching the Xbox Showcase event recently, and including myself, nothing was preparing me for what was about to come later on in the event. Fantasy Star Online 2 New Genesis. What the hell is this masterpiece? Where the hell did it come from? I need answers! Now, before I get all crazy on my emotions and express how just freaking excited I really am, let's see what got us to this point. It's summer of 2013. Me and the boys are gaming it up on Mr. Pandaria. Completely bored out of our minds, that is. Someone jumps into comms and starts talking up a game title that I haven't heard since the Dreamcast era. I listen in on the conversation. They're talking fast-paced combat. Crazy character customization, a badass loot system, dual fucking class specializations. What? Where and how do I inject this game directly into my bloodstream at this very second? He said, there's only one problem, it only released in Japan. My throbbing erection went flaccid immediately. Are you kidding me? You mean you're gonna waltz right up in here, talk about all this cool shit? Hyping me up and tell me that I can't even play it? Get your ass out of here. He was like, relax, man. I know a way that we can all play together on the Japanese servers. Go on. It's a little complicated, but all you need to do is learn some basic hiragana, steal a Japanese social security number, make an account on the Japanese Sega website in hopes they don't delete your account if they ever caught you playing their Japanese-only game, and already know how to understand a game that I haven't played since before 2001. Uh, okay. Four hours of frustration and panning through YouTube video guides later, and we were in. Now up to this point is all amazing memories of my first moments playing PSO2, and gaming that shit literally every waking day. It was such a breath of fresh air away from all the other MMO game titles that were just completely disappointing me with every release. That's right, I'm looking at you, Arcage, and <laughs> Final Fantasy XIV Vanilla. Uh, okay, sorry. But it almost felt like everything that was being released at the time in the West was just pure garbage. So getting my hands on something that took me away to something different and new caused for me to sink a lot of time into it. Over the years of PSO2's lifespan, its North American player base would start to expand, which led to people creating English patches for the game so that we could play the game with more comfort. I can honestly say I still didn't understand what most of what was happening in the game, but it didn't matter. Every aspect of the game had a death grip around my neck and chokeslam me with its addictive depths. The Dark Falls event is always what I'll remember about the game the most. Walking on a platform that was falling through space, fighting this giant ass fucking monster that took up three computer screens in size, then finally defeating it with a group of people that I never met a day in my life, and all that juicy, juicy rare item drops. 
Oh baby, now that's the good stuff. And it just got better from there on out. Very rarely will I play a game title for multiple years and enjoy it so much that I come back to it again and again. Generally, that should show how successful the progression of a game title is, that dedicated players who tend to leave for various reasons will return and continue enjoying that experience playing that specific game. For me, this spot has been reserved for World of Warcraft in which I've been playing on and off for the span of WoW's entire lifetime. Don't get me wrong, there's been plenty of frustration over the years that have left a stale taste in my mouth and forced me to look for entertainment elsewhere. I've brought up this subject in the past when speaking about Phantasy Star Online 2, but never would I have guessed that the North American release would ignite feelings of euphoria and excitement all over again. If you haven't played PSO2 in the past and got to experience exactly what I'm talking about, you got no excuses anymore, man. It's waiting for you next door to bring over a cup of sugar. In my opinion, it's something that everybody needs to experience. There was a coincidental moment that happened just about a month after my last review of PSO2. Sega finally announced that PSO2 would be coming to the US. Are you freaking serious? The years of English patches and stealing fake Japanese social security numbers were over. We would be getting our own taste of PSO2 right here at home. A majority of the fan base were thrilled for the launch, seeing how successful the title was over in Japan, not to mention the dedicated fan base of past titles such as Fantasy Star Universe and the original Fantasy Star Online were ready to start this new adventure of the English version. Many of us had different expectations of the game being ported over to the US, and we had our suspicions. So what exactly did we get with the NA launch of PSO2? Now if you played the Japanese version, you know that the game is currently in its 6th episode of the storyline. Weapons and units have higher rarity, and a plethora of additions have been added over time to give the game more life. With the launch of the NA version, Sega announced that PSO2 NA would be starting at its 3rd episode storyline, allowing players to have a bunch of content to chew on, as well as seasonal events that tied into the Japanese version of the game. If you were a previous Japanese server player that put in a lot of time building up your characters, this news may not have sat well with you seeing as how you had to start the long haul all over again. As for the rest of us, we were joyful at the fact that Sega cared enough to bring PSO2 over to the US. Episode 4 has already been announced for the NA servers and will release sometime in August, so at least Sega is doing their part to catch everyone back up to where they once were. And now, the present day. Fantasy Star Online 2 New Genesis is exactly what this game needed. A complete overhaul, graphic enhancements, bigger world exploration, new bosses and enemy types, and all that good old combat style that made this game legendary. The preview was over in two minutes, and I didn't even know what I was watching until I put that shit on replay a dozen times. But the best thing of all this just loads the icing on top of the cake its initial release will be here in the great old US of A. Hot damn, Jesus' middle name must have been Sega because we've been blessed, baby. Playing PSO2 over the years have been a delight, but the future holds good things to come. And with the feed of information that comes along with it too, hopefully will bear good news to follow. My expectations are through the roof, but I hope all of you are as excited as I am. And if you haven't gotten around to playing PSO2 already, Go fire up that console or PC and see exactly what you've been missing. My name's Morphine, thanks for being a part of the addiction, and damn I need a shower.